Good morning. It's Saturday morning. You know what that time is. It's time for Saturday morning cereals. Alright, I'm back with another week's worth of cartoons. We're really mixing it up this week. Uh, I'm going to keep mixing it up. Um, if you like some of the cartoons that we air and we don't go back to them, let us know. We will come back to it. I will get more and I will bring it back. So, as always, our the, the Saturday morning cereals is brought to you by Are You Game? the best comic book video game collectible store in all of Pickwell, Ohio, and the Group Therapy TV podcast. We are a all-encompassing entity that takes over this world. Not really. I'm just a guy that likes cartoons, likes teaching people about cartoons, loves teaching people about geeky stuff and whatnot. So I want you guys to have a good time. And this week, we're going to start off as we do every week. We're going to bring you the first, this week's episode of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of episodes of Dungeons and Dragons left, so you might want to hang on to these. If not, we might mix them up. Maybe we'll bring one back again later. So we'll, we'll do reruns. Uh, we'll rerun reruns, So because that's what they are now. So. We're going to let you have this week's episode of Dungeons and & Dragons, and we'll be back with more Saturday morning serials and more episodes. Uh, we are mixing it up this time, big time, so enjoy. We'll be back. Hey, look! The Dungeons & Dragons ride! Wow! Neat! Give me a break! Fear not, ranger, barbarian, magician, thief, cavalier, and acrobat. Who was that? That was Venger, the force of evil. I am Dungeon Master, your guide in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons! Aw, oh, come on, Sheila, you're not still mad at me, are you? How was I supposed to know that you were serious? <laughs> I mean, when you grabbed the ring and then did this... <laughs> it looked hilarious! What was that? Oh, rats! Not rats! Or... Not again! Come on, get ready! Ah! Yeah. A whole army of them! Guess what? What? We're, We're surrounded! surrounded. What are we gonna do? Something we've never done before! Run! Cavaliers first! We have the children trapped in the hills of never. Well, we can't go back that way. Why aren't they coming after us? Can't blame them. This place looks like something out of Better Homes and Gargoyles. Gives me the shivers. 
like those goblins Venger had guarding that ring Dungeon Master sent us after. And don't forget, it was I, the courageous cavalier, that saved you and the ring. You mean cowardly cavalier, don't you? Huh? If it weren't for me, we wouldn't even have the ring or the free trip home. Uh, Eric. Dungeon Master said the ring was only the first step towards a way home. Besides, who let us into that ambush back there? Hey, nobody's perfect. Just remember, without me, we wouldn't have the ring at all. Right, Sheila? I said I was sorry. I didn't mean to. Those goblins scared me. A clear chance to go home and she nearly blows it. Huh. Lighten up, Eric. <laughs> it's okay, Sheila. You did fine. Uh, don't listen to Eric, Sheila. You know he's right. I always mess up. Hey, what's important is we've got the ring, right? But if it hadn't been for me... <laughs> he's just having one of his days, Sheila. Ignore him. <laughs> Go away and leave me alone. All of you! <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> Somebody help me! Help! <laughs> oh. Do you hear that, Uni? <laughs> I'd better wake up the others. Wait a minute. I don't need their help. Right, Uni? <coughs> Come on, Uni. We've got to find her. Help! I'm in here. See? I told you I could find her. <coughs> uh, hello? <coughs> Please, help me. I'm, I'm, I'm trapped by this spell. What can I do? <laughs> Reach your hand through, and maybe you can pull me out. Uh, 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 I don't think I, I can do it. Oh, please try. I've been here ever so long. Uh, uh, uh. You did it. The spell is broken. Ranger, the children are in the floor. <laughs> The spell is broken. She must be stopped. How can I ever thank you? Hank, can you see her? No. What did you do to my sister, Eric? Relax. She probably just went for a walk. No sign of Sheila or Uni. They just disappeared. If anything happens to her... Gently, barbarian. Dungeon Master! Your sister is safe for now. She's okay? Fine, just fine. You know, if you hadn't sent us after that ring, none of this would have happened. And the dumb thing won't even get us home. Only when the ring of the heart is placed within and above the ring of the mind will a power be released which can send you home. Within and above? What? Why can't you ever say what you mean? Which ring do we have? And where will we find the other ring? You must go where your heart leads you. But remember, in shadow there lies great danger and great rewards. Aw, oh, that's it! I've had it with riddles! Hank, he's disappeared again! Poor little guy just can't talk under pressure. That's why he leaves. Well, might as well. Hank, what are you talking about? Look, the shadows point that way. And Dungeon Master said that in shadow lies great danger. And maybe Sheila. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go. Hey, over here, guys. I found something. What the? Look out. Take cover. What's happening? Where is your ring of power? I told you, my brother put it in the Citadel of Shadow. My other friends and I just found one. A bright blue ring. Really? Whoa, look out! Ah! Ah! Karina, help! You've got to be more careful. I need you. There it is. This could be very dangerous, you know. 
Don't try and talk me out of it. We're friends. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> I suppose we could always go into the rock garden business. Abracadabra, at Alakazam, give me something to get us out of this jam. Whoa! That stuff won't work without a detonator. It won't? Ah. I could be wrong. Good going, Presto. This way, everybody. Hey, Dungeon Master did say shadow. Look at that place. Come on, let's go! This is it. It is? Oh. My ring is inside. No! <laughs> Karina! What is it? My brother. He's put a spell on the doors. Nice guy. We've got to get my ring back, Sheila. I'm afraid you'll have to do it for me. guarding my ring. Now that I have it, I don't need you any longer. But uh, I thought we were friends. You thought wrong. <laughs> Sheila! What? Sheila! We found you! Are you okay? Who's your friend? Her name is Karina. Vengeance! I thought I would find you here, Karina. You know Venger? Welcome, brother. He's your brother? You're his sister? Well, you've done it again, Sheila. This time, I shall destroy you and your young friends. Hey, she, she, she's not our friend. She, she, Sheila's friend. We've got to get out of here. Somebody, think of something. This way, guys. Hey, Eric. We're going to be fricasseed. Back here. Huh? Oh. I wonder who's winning in there. Where'd you meet her, Sheila? She was trapped in a cave. You rescued Venger's sister? She didn't tell me that part. What about Karina? What are we waiting for? Come on! Wow! That was terrific! How did you do that? I couldn't have done it without Sheila's help. Huh? 
I didn't do anything, really. Ah! Nonsense. Without Sheila and Uni's help, I would never have gotten my ring back or been able to overpower my brother. Ah! You know, we'd make a great team, Karina. How about it? You care to join us? Don't touch me. Oh, well, it, it was just a suggestion. I'm sorry. That that shoulder hurts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently. Actually, there is something you could do for me. Huh? Name it! Anything! If we have it, it's yours. I'm not so sure about this. The ring you found. I must have it. Then and only then will I have absolute power. No, Corina. <gasps> Dungeon Master! Uh, the ring the children have is not and never shall be yours. Be satisfied with the one you already possess. But Dungeon Master, she got rid of Vinger. Only temporarily. Now go, Corina. Leave these children alone. Very well. Temporarily. I thought I was helping her, Dungeon Master. I didn't know who she was. I'm terribly sorry. You did nothing wrong, my child. You simply followed your heart, which may lead to great danger or even greater good. What do you mean? Many years ago, there was a struggle for power between Venger and Karina. In the end, Venger won, imprisoned Karina, and took her ring. So what's so bad about Sheila freeing her? She's evil. I've seen it. And now because of me, she's free and has her ring back. And your power. And now she wants our ring, too. Wait a minute. Let me guess. Karina's ring is the other ring we need to get home, right? What? Huh? I quote, Only when the ring of the heart is placed within and above the ring of the mind will a power be released which can send us home. Right, DM? I started memorizing his riddles. Ring of the heart? Oh, no. Karina's ring has a small heart carved in it. That means... To get home, we need Karina's ring, too. That is correct. Hey, I didn't want to go home anyway. I hate milkshakes, cheeseburgers, pizza. First, we'll have to find her. To succeed, one of you will have to be more wrong than right. But let your heart guide you, for only the heart can lead you home. He's gone again! Well, if Karina is Venger's sister, we might as well start looking at Venger's castle. Venger's castle? Talk about being more wrong than right! This looks like it's going to be easier than we thought. I think there's a trail over there. Come on. I'm sorry, Karina. Their loyalty is to Venger. They won't fight for you. Most of them have already left. I should have expected my brother to surround himself with fools. Not me. I'll wait right here. Ow! <laughs> Good idea, Eric. You wait here. Besides, you're already sitting down. If Karina is in there, anyone have any idea how to get the ring away from her? Uh, guys? It sure would help if we knew for sure she was here. Guys? What is it, Eric? Look! Sheila! Sorry. I guess that was a little loud, wasn't it? Thanks, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Sheila. You have saved me a great deal of work. Give me the ring. I don't have it. Hank does. Very well. We shall see which he'd prefer. You or the ring. First you'll have to catch me, Karina. <laughs> you missed me. Not for long. <laughs> I sure hope Venger's other brothers and sisters are more clever than you. When I'm through with you, I'll deal with your friends. How would you know what friends are? You don't have any. You'll never escape. Thank you, Karina. Your magic seems to be as unreliable as your friendship. No! Without my ring, I'm defenseless. You won't mind if I borrow this. One friend to another. There's another one! Get him! Going my way, miss? Sure. This was getting a little boring anyway. Hey, you two wouldn't have a party and not invite me, would you? I got a ring! 
You did? Well, here's the other one. Now what? Within and above. May I see it, Hank? Within and above. Wait a minute. I think I've got it. Avenger, no! Now, Karina, I will do what I should have done years ago. Come on, Sheila. If you got it figured out, do it. I want to go home. No! Sheila? Avenger! Let him destroy her. Oh, no, not now. Not when we're so close. Goodbye, little sister. What? You shall not help her. What can I do? Throw the rings at him. Stay away from her, Karina. She... she tried to help me. This is yours, I believe. Thank you. I'm sorry, guys. That's okay. I mean, at least you didn't lose the ring, right? Wrong, Cavalier. The ring which could have freed you has become Venger's prison and freed Karina of evil. Oh, well, Karina, you can get us home, can't you? Without the other ring, no. Oh, great! I know it! Goodbye pizza, goodbye milkshake, goodbye cheeseburgers, sauerkraut, homework. Oh, well, I guess it isn't all bad news. Anything else within my power, I grant you, Sheila. I owe you my life. All I want is your friendship, Karina. What? That's all? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Welcome home, Karina. Well, I lost us a chance to get home, but gained a friend. Great trade. Oh! What's the matter, Eric? Need a hand? <laughs> need a friend? All right, all right, I need a friend. Now get me out of here. Okay, come on. vehicles and ordinary men become an awesome fighting team. It's the secret of Mask, where illusion is the ultimate weapon. Go under the microfilm. Mask vehicles, each sold separately with action figures. That doesn't stop me. Switchblade attacks. Leave out. Rhino retaliates. Sato creates a diversion. Rhino reveals its hidden firepower. Gotcha. Mask, where illusion is the ultimate weapon. The Micro Machine Man here, presenting the genuine, original, colossally collectible, most midget miniature episodes of the real things, Micro Machines. Dramatically detailed, stupendously styled, smaller than enough, this one or this one. And now with a totally terrific town, the new Micro Machine Super City 2-Box playset. Closed, it's a mild matter 2-Box. Open, it's a Micro Machine USA. Cruise your mini Micro Machine vehicles, planes and boats to the police station, the marina, the mini motorcycle repair shop, the gas station, the construction office, work, the real working drawbridge, highway, passion to ramp and garage doors, or take a Micro Machine flying machine in for a landing. Phew, this place has it all. The new Micro Machine Super City 2-Box playset from Galoo. The one and only outrageous original miniatures. Remember, if it doesn't say Micro Machines, it's not the real. It's Wampa Cave! Look's inside! We better get him out! Argarg! Wampa! Introducing Hoth World. Three play sets in one. New from Star Wars Micro Collection line. Nineteen die-cast figures and action poses included. Wow, they're small enough to fit in one hand. Yeah! Pow! So much for Probot Spy. It's safe, Chewie. Arg! Arg! We can get back to Hoth Eye and Cannon. Hey, it connects to Hoth Wampa Cave. Han's here! Close blast doors. Raise Rebel Soldier in observation tower. Empire's approaching, Princess Leia. Activate Iron Cannon. They're bombarding our base. Quick, connect to the Hop generator attack. Vader's headed in with Scout Walker and Stormtroopers. Scout Walker's hit, sir. Aim for the generators, men. Good work. The world of Hop is ours! Yeah! Host World from Star Wars Micro Collection line. Play sets also sold separately. Figures included. New from Kenner.
New Hot Wheels Landlord. You can check out the pipes. They're hugging the side with two racing spoilers along for the ride. It's hot. Now you can get this Hot Wheels Camaro Z28 and this 82 Firebird. They're free when you send this coupon. And proofs of purchase from any six Hot Wheels cars to Mattel. Details and coupons are on this two free Hot Wheels cars display at participating stores. Offer expires November 30th, 1982. Hot Wheels Landlord. Not for use with some sets. New from a... Oh, episode's over, huh? Hope you like this week's episode of Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, we're going to bring to you another episode of Sectors. Those of you last week, well, you, you hear something? Did you hear it? Did you hear it? That's right. A lot of people that worked on Sectors are a lot of the guys from Transformers, G.I. Joe. You have Peter Cullen, Optimus Prime. You have Frank Welker, Megatron. You have Neil Ross, who did the voice of Duke and, and all this. But you had Arthur Burkhart. That's right, Destro was there for the episode of Sectors. So... It was also created by Ruby Spears, you know, because, you know, a lot of stuff in the 80s was created by Ruby Spears. Um, it was only, the, like I said last time, it was only five episodes. Um, it ran from September to October 12th, September 14th to October 12th, 1985. So, all right. It was, if you'll listen to the music, yet again, Haim Saban. That's right. Power Rangers Haim Saban. Did the vo did the music for Sectors. Also, this was based on the toys. As you can see, here, some of these badass toys right here. I love the Sectors. Um, was from Coleco. Coleco was not known for their action figure line. They were known for their uh, um, like Atari knockoff system and Cabbage Patch Kids. That's right, Cabbage Patch Kids. The same company that made Cabbage Patch Kids made these awesome ass figures. I mean, look at that. He had a cool place for his, you know, holsters and stuff like that. And I, I know as bad as I am missing some weapons. Uh, but uh, Zika Toys recently has started remaking the Sectors figures. Not in a cool, you know, Marvel Legends size, but the three and a quarter inch G.I. Joe size. And they're still awesome. So, I want you guys to enjoy this week's episode of Sectors. Uh, we will burn through Sectars very fast. It's like I said, there's only five episodes. We'll be out of Sectar episodes within a few weeks. So have fun. Go get yourself a bowl of cereal. Go get yourself some toast. Get yourself some orange juice. Get some milk. And sit down and enjoy this week's episode of Sectars. In the far reaches of the universe is the star planet Symbion. A perfect world until their biological experiments exploded. Creating an exotic realm beyond all belief. As mutant life forms ravaged their global paradise, a new and incredible species emerged. The Sectars. With Prince Dargon leading his warriors of the Shining Realm against the evil General Spyrax. He would destroy all to rule all. His terror troops of the Dark Domain know no mercy. Dargon and the Sectors, they were about to continue their mission to stop the evil Spydrax from getting to the hive of the Ancients and its secret powers, when they were suddenly ambushed by Spydrax and his troopers. Fire! We're trapped! Head for that fog bank while I draw their fire.
Wait till you can spit on them, then open up. You got it! Hydrax is getting away. Hurry! We must track him down! They went this way. in here. Does that answer your question? We're about to become lunch. Don't fret. I'll just have Battle Beetle here cut us a way out. Pensor, no.
Look, Dragonfly. The way out. Come on. We're getting out of here. That's it. Push. I hope the others are all right. world until their biological experiments exploded, creating an exotic realm beyond... Hold! You bring me a good price at the slave auction. These maggots are slavers! Not just slavers! I'm Captain Borgia, the best slaver traveling the sea of acid rain! I've heard enough. We're getting out of here and finding Dargon. I'm with you. We're getting off this ship. Boys, there is nowhere to go. Look! Tentacles! Please, be careful. I would watch you eat her before I tell you. That thing looks hungry! What? Look out! Enjoy! 
gun. You've got more nerve than brains. I'm going to teach you some manners. You're the one who needs manners. <laughs> Want Mantor's map to the Great Hive, Spygrax? Have a drink instead. Oh. Oh. Where's Mantor's map? Got to find it. Gregor, follow me to Spydrax's tent. Looks like I'm going to have to free my sectars first. I'm getting here, young prince. I had a little chat with Spydrax. You know how he loves to talk. Did you get my map to the Great Hive? No, I came for you first. Now, Dragonflyer. from Mumra, whose wicked eyes light up with a secret ring. Thundercats take to the Thunder Tank, transforming to resist the evil mutants. <laughs> Who will win, good or evil? Now you can decide. Thundercats by Rainbow Toys. Another 
your Tycho Superblox adventure. You've got to capture the enemy command post. Looks like a job for Tycho Superblox. You have to strike hard, so you build the combat tank. Balk half-track, the mauler, and the rocket launcher. You send in your fast attack vehicle, then the attack chopper for support. You break through, you've won, and you've done it. Another great adventure with Superblox. They work with Lego, too. Tyco Superblox, military adventure series, 10 building sets, each sold separately. New from Tyco. They're back. You know, I think I'm one of the few people that loved the new universe from Marvel. Uh, I didn't love all of it. Uh, I love Cyforce. Uh, Cyforce. Uh, some uh, DP7. Uh, some Star Brand, which I don't have sitting over here, and some Night Mask. Uh, was not a fan of Kickers Inc., which was weird because it was a super powered football team. And uh, uh, Justice was not a fan of Justice. Was a fan of Spitfire and Troubleshooters and codenamed Spitfire. So, all right. This next episode, we're going to bring in you a new cartoon this week. Uh, it is the Pawpaws. That's right, Pawpaws. We had somebody ask for this. So. I can't remember who it was, so if you guys remember, uh, stay down below. And um, Pawpaws is a uh, um, kind of offensive nowadays. I'm not gonna lie. So you take this with a grain of salt. This is made in the '80s. Um, you have the Pawpaw Bears, which are based on Native Americans, so it's a little uh, cringy. So it was a Hanna Barbera cartoon. It ran from 85 to 86. It had 21 episodes. And it was part of the, the block they had, the fantastic world of Hanna-Barbera. Um, yet again, this is one of the cartoons that depending on where you were at, because it was syndicated, it did air on Sundays. Uh, it did uh, Saturdays and Sundays, depending on where you were at, um, or what market, you know, because some people, you know, like I said, up until recently, I thought everybody saw Robotech. Um, I met a guy who had not seen Robotech till he was an adult because the market he was in did not get Robotech. So, but same way with this one, the Paul Pauls was not on everybody's cartoon. You know, some people just didn't get it. Uh, they did bring it back on Cartoon Network and, uh, then it went from Cartoon Network to Boomerang. Um, it did have some voiceover work. Uh, really famous at the time, Ruth Buzzy. Yeah, she was a comedian. Um... Scooby-Doo, Don Messick, Misick, and of course Frank Walker. Frank Megatron Walker. He will be here a lot in a lot of cartoons that you will see on this show. So, I want you guys to enjoy as much as you can. Because, hey, if you find this, if you find Paul Paul's offensive, uh, let me know if you don't want to see any more of it. If you want to see more of it, let me know. Uh, I just think Paul Paul's is a weird cartoon of its time uh, I don't think it was meant to be offensive I really don't think that they were trying to go out of their way to be uh, uh, racist or anything but um, I'm going to let you guys decide so you can tell me if you don't want to see any more episodes we'll cut them out so enjoy or try to this week's episode of Paw Paws Deep, deep in the forest, far away from everywhere, with a bunch of mighty little critters, they're called the pawpaw -paw bears. These are brave and fearless pawpaws, as everyone well knows. When you get in trouble, and this goes double, you call the pawpaw -paw bear. Pawpaw -paw bears, pawpaw -paw bears. Pawpaws pop up all around like magic. They're there. The troubles that you thought you had have vanished in the air. So don't forget those pawpaws. They'll come from everywhere. If you get in trouble and this goes double, you call the pawpaw bear. Pawpaw bears. Pawpaw bears. Awesome! They're flying a perfect formation! 
Not quite perfect, Brave Paul. Looks like one of them is in trouble. shape, fella. You didn't do them exercises I taught you, did you? Hmm? And I bet you've been eating junk duck food again, right? How are you going to get strong enough to fly south? Hey, guys, back off. Quacker doesn't need a lecture. He needs PLC. PLC? Sure. Paw Paw Loving Care, right? Right. right. Wrong. <gasps> Dark Paw. And the Mutt Pack. <laughs> Look at them. The do-gooder pawpaws are at it again. Yeah! Yeah, yeah! When I take over, there won't be any more of that stuff. You tell them, Dark Boy, you're the meanest. Yeah! Get lost, Dark Paw. Yeah! Take your minos in your mutt pack and shove off, or you're... He's off, you two! Remember, pawpaws are always polite. Polite? To a wizard who's always trying to cast wicked spells on us? Yeah, and make all the pawpaws his slaves. How many times have I told you his spells won't work? As long as I have the mystic moonstone to summon the mighty totem bear. He'll protect us from any danger, no matter what it is. Don't be so sure. I'm working on a spell now that will knock your moccasins off. Then I'll make myself your master forever. Forever! I got a better idea. Why don't you make yourself disappear? Forever! No one talks to Dark Paw that way. Sick of my butt! <laughs> I can do it. Please let me swipe the Mystic Moonstone. Mystic Moonstone? Bah! Who needs it? But if you had the Mystic Moonstone, then your magic wouldn't be such a wipeout. Wipeout? I mean, I mean, I'll show you a wipeout. <laughs> the perfect magic formula to gain power over the pawpaws. The nest of a rat, a handful of weeds, the tooth of a bat, some bitter grape seeds, a big lump of clay, a small bit of stone, a new lock of hair, an old herring bone. To put all the pawpaws under my power, the final ingredient, milk that's gone sour. It's like I've always said, we've got to steal the Mystic Moonstone. Don't feel bad about your magic not working, oh great Dark Boy! Yeah, forget it. It's like they say, it's water under the dam. You mean water over the dam? Ah, you're both wrong. It's water through the dam. That's how I'll get the Moonstone. There it is. 
the beaver dam. I want you two to knock a hole in it. Yeah, I always wanted to do that. Yeah, it'll flood out the whole blah blah village. But how's that gonna get you the Mystic Moonstone? One thing at a time. I don't want to overload your little brains with too many of my bright ideas. Well, we better give him a lot more healing water from the magic spring. But we're all out, and the spring is way up in the hills. Maybe we should take Quacker up to the spring. No, no, we can't move him yet. Well, if we can't take Quacker to the spring, then we'll take the spring to Quacker. Come on, Mighty Paw. Paw, give it all you got. Right. Okay, princess, here it comes. some wild super seeds. They're just what the doctor ordered to give you strength. No, no problem. We'll take the seed buggy out in the forest and gather some up. Come on, Papooch. Great idea. Watch out for the Minos. Taffy Paw's safe while Papooch is with her. Create a diversion. Now pay attention, because this is the plan. When the dam breaks, the town will be flooded. The princess will run to the alarm, and that's when we'll grab the mystic moonstone from her. I'll tie a line around your leg, Slippery Paw, and let you down from the ledge just behind the alarm. And I grab the moonstone. Oh, Dark Paw, you are the greatest, the most marvelous, the most wonderful creepy creep who ever crawled the earth. It's laughing for and that mud of hers after them. <laughs> You think.
sabotage the dam. What a beautiful disaster, and it's headed straight for the Paw Paw Village. Oh, Dark Paw, you are the nastiest! We've got to put my plan to grab the Mystic Moonstone to work. Just a minute. Call the mutt back. Yeah, mutt back! <laughs> works. Okay, big guy. You ready to try a test flight? Smash the dam. Oh no, I told you not to tell me that. That means the waters from the lake are headed right for our village. Brave Paul, you go with Papuchin and find Laughing Paul. I'll sound the alarm. Okay, here she comes. Get ready. Moonstone is mine. Dark Paw rules. Oh, <laughs> Princess Paw Paw! Dark Paw, you can't be this mean! Use your magic to stop this flood! Bah! This is nothing compared to what I'm going to do! <laughs> yeah, you ain't seen nothing yet! 
Yeah, nothing. Well, you may have the Mystic Moonstone, but I still have to help my pawpaws. You hear that? She's going to help her pawpaws. I'd like to know how. <laughs> Flying Cloud! <laughs> I tell ya, you can't save him. Almost ready, Lapping Paw. I don't want to sound pushy, but uh, could you sort of hurry up? Okay, Golden Thunder. Heave. Oh. There's no way you're gonna save the village. But you could save it, Dark Paw, if you use the Mystic Moonstone for good. For good, huh? Well, let's see what good I can do. And now I'm gonna create the most colossal, the most gigantic, the most terrible storm that ever was. To me, you stone snatcher. Quick, Cracker, bring it to me. Oh, thank you, Cracker. I hope I'm not too late. Totem Bear can help us.
sold separately. You. Wealth is indulging in self-care while investing in something bigger than yourself. Automatic investments based on what you care about with Wealthfront. A fantasy world of crystal warriors, demons, and wizards. Good wizards like Ogeodi, evil wizards like Zarda, and underworld demons like Moltar. They've captured Ogeodi! Each figure with a crystal prism that makes everything look like this. Goodness and might, evil and might, the winner is up to you! The Saga of Crystar Collection. Each figure sold separately by Remco. Up and hills, down and tails, as we hit the dusty trail, on the ends we go marching along. We are bad, we are boss, we've got guts that squish and squash, army ends we go marching along. Then it's high, high E for the end artillery. I'm glad, you know, I'm not going to say glad you liked it, but, you know, if you did like it, you did. If you didn't, you didn't. Let me know. Um, we're going to bring to you, somebody else asked for this one, so we're going to bring it to you, Inhumanoids. That's right, Inhumanoids. Uh, Inhumanoids is one of them shows that existed in the same universe as Transformers, G.I. Joe, and Gemini Holograms. Uh, they were all connected through uh, TV anchor... Hector Ramirez. So, and they never really crossed over anything other than the uh, um, uh, Hector Ramirez appearing on all, all four shows. Uh, it ran 25 episodes, but that would be kind of a fib because um, it was on the Super Sunday with, uh, yeah, see, this is not a Saturday morning cartoon, so it's a Sunday morning cartoon, with Gem, Robotics, and Bigfoot, which were in five-minute intervals. So them early episodes, really like five to six minute episodes, I don't think they count. It really runs about 13 episodes if they if you put the episodes, you know, together. Uh, it ran from June 29th to December 14th, 1986. Uh, it was a syndicated cartoon. It did not appear on, you know, it wasn't on a set show, on a set of channels. Um, it, I enjoy Inhumanoids. I, I've been re-watching this a lot lately. Um, it's funny cause it's, it's not to give anything away, but, um, it's, some people consider it the first animated appearance of, uh, Cthulhu, which we've already got though, the animated appearance of Cthulhu in real Ghostbusters. So I want you guys to hang back, maybe go get you another bowl of cereal, maybe get you a pop tart this time, maybe get you some donuts. I don't know. Uh, or maybe if you're still awake, pop you open an energy drink, down that sucker, and enjoy Inhumanoids. Have fun. Inhumanoids! Inhumanoids! The evil that lies within. But down in the fiery depths of the earth where nightmares ah! begin. Inhumanoids, inhumanoids, the evil that lies within. Deep within the Big Sur National Forest, scientists today are transporting what many believe to be the skeleton of a long extinct dinosaur miraculously preserved in an amber monolith. Dr. Herman Armstrong. Herc. Excuse me, <laughs> Herc Armstrong, leader of the Earth Corps, a government-funded research team dedicated to investigating mysterious events under the Earth's surface. Would you comment on rumors that the monolith was emitting a strange sound and glowing when it was discovered by a pair of campers? And that the trees seem to be <clears throat> speaking? I'm sure there's a rational explanation for... What's that? Oh, no! Look out! Thanks. 
This is Barbara Walker signing off from Big Sur, where mysterious events are definitely taking place. But there, there's nothing down that far. Yes, there is. Okay, you're the boss. Take her down! Two miles! Whatever you say! whose contributions to our beautiful city of San Francisco are too numerous to mention. Sandra Shore, benefactor of the Shore Museum. Thank you. Before unveiling this incredible find, let me introduce the brave members of the Earth Corps who will be studying this strange phenomenon. First, Herc Armstrong, leader of the Earth Corps. Next to him is Dr. Derek Bright, designer of the Earth Corps Advanced Technology. And next to Dr. Bright, Augur, distinguished archaeologist and the man responsible for constructing the Earth Corps specialized suits and vehicles. And finally, Jonathan M. Slattery, better known as Liquidator, master of chemistry, spelunking, and sundry arcane sciences. What do you think she's doing after the party? I find it very unlikely she'd be seen with you. Obviously, she's a woman of refinement. Now, without further ado, let us unveil the most significant archaeological discovery of the century. The monster's cold-blooded. Maybe cryogenic. It's like... a vine. I need a tissue sample. Leave that to me. Auger, don't you? Well, I'm gonna check out that thing in the amber block. <laughs>
Then we free. Let me. What were you and the lady doing in there? Listen, Auger, you want a romantic advice? Buy a book. I don't believe it. They're gone. And after the Inferno, the monster simply vanished, leaving behind more questions than answers. Were they from outer space? Mutations caused by toxic waste? Or were they a mass illusion created by the stress of modern living? Right. Is this part of the weapon or just a doodle? Amazing. The tissue sample is growing at an incredible rate. Earth to Dr. Bright. Hmm? Oh, it's a... it's a doodle, I think. File it. I'll file it. Hey, look at this, guys. <laughs> 12th century. Looks like our buddy from last night's been around uh -huh. for a while, huh? Is that so? Okay. Just thought you might be interested. These things most likely come from the center of the Earth, General. But we have no evidence that they're extraterrestrials. We think it came from the center of the Earth. What do you mean, tell it to the Global Inquirer? Well, it looks like we're on our own, guys. Good, I hate red tape. So, where should we start looking for the creatures? The way I figure it, they must have escaped into the bay. Let's take the sub and start our search right here. Auger, the answer lies in the forest. Remember the vibes? Vibes? Let's be a little more professional, Liquidator. Well, then let's hear your theory. All right. An oil worker reported seeing the tendril monster come out of the drilling shaft. That shaft will undoubtedly lead us to the bottom of this mystery. Well, I'm glad we're in agreement, as usual. Auger, I'll accompany you. Bright, check out the shaft. <sighs> nothing. Eh, nothing at all. Come on! Communicate with me! 
with me. There's no reason we can't be friends. I mean you no harm. You shall never violate this forest again. Fifty feet. Walls are covered with strange markings. I'm going deeper. Below is... Uh, amazing. A chamber. It appears to be a cell. I suspect that the tendril monster was imprisoned here. Destruction. The creatures would have entered the water near the Golden Gate and... Headed just about anywhere. Yeah, that about sums it up. Look, an old B-29. Probably crashed during World War II. But the fuselage looks like somebody stepped on it. Look, a footprint. There's another. Let's hope we find the monsters before they find us. Look out! <laughs> Tuna fish. They aren't our problem today, Augur. I'm taking us up. <sighs> Sorry. I guess that old Rex sort of spooked me. No doubt about it. The monsters couldn't have found a better place to hide. Yes, they could. Hold on to your seat. We're going in. You sure this is a good idea? I'm getting a depth reading of two miles. We must be in a lava tube. A doorway to the center of the Earth. Full throttle! It's no use! It's got us! And it's crushing us like a tin can! It's got us! And it's crushing us like a tin can! Put on your helmet! I'm blowing the pressure bolts! strange markings. He splattered poiminant, Mr. Shaw. They'll need a spatula for him. That's a terrible tragedy. Trigger the cave-in. Then nobody can prove anything. Environmental suits. You never should have touched the amber. Hey, look, we didn't. 
know what we were doing. Humans seldom do. We'll give it back. Really? We, we don't want it. One should not steal what one does not want. Look, look, you're right. I couldn't agree with you more. From now on, I won't take so much as a pine cone from this forest. You are a curious being. Oh, I should have gone for a joyride in the sub with Herc and Auger. Your aura is good. Your thoughts are pure. Let us show you the horror you have returned to the world. Long ago, a terrible war between the Mutors and the evil Inhumanoids raged far below. The Inhumanoid, Metlar, tyrant from the core. Decompose the undead horror. And Tendro, ravager of the Earth's mantle, set out to crush the Mutors. We, the mighty Redwoods, along with the peaceful Granites, and our magnetic ally, MagnaCore, fought an impossible war against impossible odds. Though our losses were great, we defeated them and drove them into submission. The monster Tendril was sealed into a stone chamber where he stayed until humans released him. Decompose was paralyzed by the sunlight and toppled into an amber pit. And the tyrant Metlar was trapped in MagnaCore's magnetic field. He is still confined, but I fear the others will release him. If that should happen, the world will never know peace. Don't worry. I... I promise you we will stop them. You talking to me? Huh? No. I, I was talking to, uh... You ought to get out of the sun, pal. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Thanks. I tell you, there's one born every minute. And I am telling you, the trees were talking. You know, Liquidator's story jibes very well with my own. When I was investigating the drilling shaft, I discovered a deep chamber which might well be this tendril's prison. Then we must stop the Inhumanoids before they can release Metlar. Otherwise...
Empire's command post and claw and Tyrant's dragon wind, each complete with figures. Bad scientist! I've done it! It's dissect an alien and it's... it's... Gross! You take his insides out and put them back in. Too gross. Yeah. That's disgusting. <laughs> He's a real slime bucket! Yeah. yeah! Dissect an alien. Watch for time freaks and more gross creations so you too can be a mad scientist! Too gross. Earth's first line of defense. Has a breakthrough in space technology. Magnalock. It defies the law of gravity. Activate Starcom equipment. Control Starcom weapon. Figures and vehicles each sold separately. Magnalock, a mighty power for Starcom. A deadly threat in the hands of the Shadow Force. Who will survive? Starcom! Alright. Hey, glad you liked this week's episode of Inhumanoids. So, we're going to bring you another new cartoon this week. Um, this is Black Star. Black Star. A lot of people don't remember Black Star. Black Star only lasted 13 episodes in 1981. It was on CBS. Um, it went from September uh, 12th to December 5th, 1981. It was, a lot of people believe it's the prototype He-Man. Um, even though He-Man was developed separately, but... There are a lot, lots of similarities. And the fact that they were both done by Filmation. They reused some of the cells. They reused some of the monsters from that for uh, He-Man. But then again, they also reused a lot of stuff from Flash Gordon for He-Man. So, Alan Oppenheimer, of course, Skeletor does a voice on here and of course Frank Megatron Walker is back again for another episode uh, for another for another show yet he is everywhere I could probably walk through my basement trip over Frank Walker because he's literally everywhere um, the funny part about it is Black Star was originally pitched as a African-American lead um, but this they TV did not think that a, a black cartoon character lead in 1981 was what they wanted to do. Mind you, Filmation also did the Bill Cosby and the Cosby Kids. That did not age well. Um, but, you know, Black Star's Black Star. I enjoy Black Star. Black Star has some of the coolest toys. I mean, I've got these little goblin guys up here, little gremlin guys. Um, those are from Bla uh, Black Star. Black Star had uh, some really unique uh figures a lot of the stuff never appeared in a cartoon but they made toys out of it um the toys came out much later after the cartoon had already ended because they were trying to jump on the he-man bandwagon um they weren't in scale to he-man even though as a kid i played with them alongside with my he-man so i didn't care uh, they tend to be taller and not squat so all right i want you to enjoy this week's episode of black star have fun and we'll be back. John Blackstar, astronaut. Is swept through a black hole into an ancient alien universe. Trapped on the planet Sagar, Blackstar is rescued by the tiny Trobit people. In turn, he joins their fight for freedom against the cruel overlord. who rules by the might of the Power Star. The Power Star is split into the Power Sword and the Star Sword. And so, with Star Sword in hand, Black Star, together with his allies, sets out to save the planet Sagar. This is his destiny. I am John Black Star. There in the temple of the cave apes. But the cave apes worship her, my lord. Will they let us take her? They worship her. 
but they fear me. There she is, Overlord. Amber the Sorceress, wrapped in sleep for centuries. She will lead me to the lost city of Tamborion and the powers of the Ancient Ones. The Lord, the Cavings! Oven back! Stand ready, Vizier. your spell, Vizier, while my power sword holds her. Amber, we are your friends. You will lead us to Tamborion and the powers of the Ancient Ones. Yes, you shall have the secrets of the Ancient Ones. At last, with such power at my control, Black Star will be doomed. Monkey bird. <laughs> I'm telling you, Pluto, you better not fool with Balkar's magic. I told you so. Pluto, put that down! That's ice from the Overlord's palace! You're gonna get in trouble! I wonder if this planet will ever get back to the peacefulness of ancient times. That came from Bolkar's lab. Oh, what have you done? What did you conjure up with that eye? Overlord's Ice Palace! It's Amber the Sorceress! She was my ally centuries ago! On to Tamborium! The mystic scroll will reveal the powers of the Ancient Ones. I feel a strange presence. Amber, it is I! Your friend, Mara, you must remember! Mara, my friend. Don't listen to her, Amber. She is your enemy. Your enemy! Marai is my enemy. Take them, Amber. Take 
all of them. Excellent, Amber. And now, to Tamborion. After you, my friend. As for my enemies, they are well in hand. Where, where, where are we, clone? Wherever we are, I don't think we're alone. Shh. What? What's happening? Clone? Why would Amber lead the Overlord to Tamborion? She must be under his spell. Yes, and if the Overlord finds the lost scroll of the Ancient Ones, we are all doomed. Black Star follows us. This should keep them occupied. A sandstorm. It is the Overlord's doing. It's burying us. Excellent. Now the way is clear to Tamborian. And powers beyond imagination. There's one chance if I can fuse the sand into a dome. Now, what do we do about the sandstorm? Balkar, your magic is that of the elements. With my power behind it, we can stop the storm. Well, I guess we don't need this dome anymore. I'll never get used to having such incredible strength. <laughs> I hope you never lose it. Let's go. I feel dizzy, Overlord. You have tricked me. But now your spell has worn off. Not for long. You were saying, Amber? I was saying, I wonder how my guests are enjoying their stay. Yay! Oh, looks like we're trapped.
quick thinking. Well, we're safe from the crystal creature, but we still don't know where we are. I am impressed by your powers. Even the flame mountains cause us no threat. There will be threat enough when we reach Tamborian. There we must face Sumaro, the Guardian. Tamborian! There is the sanctum of wisdom. Within it is the scroll of the ancients. Finally, the knowledge of the ancient ones is mine. over the centuries. Run! Hang on tight, you two. This doesn't look like a fun place to visit. was worse than some of Riff's cooking. Tamborian. After all these centuries. What is that? Sumaro, the guardian of Tamborian. We must save Amber from him. Slingshot, Goliath. Black Star! This is our chance. Sumero will destroy them while we get away. It is I, your friend, Mara. No, no, I can't. I must help them. You fool. The Overlord! Back, you rebel! Hands off, Samaro!
cavalry's coming! Amber, you've got to help me stop Sumaro! Yes, I will! care of Samaro. Now for the Overlord. Let me give you a reading light, Overlord. Is destroyed. There is still much knowledge here in Tamborian. True. And I would much rather stay here and learn it than return to the Temple of the Cave Apes. It's good to know we have another ally in the battle against the Overlord. But Blackstar, you told us that the volcano... I know. But I think it'll take more than a volcano to stop the Overlord. <coughs> Pulo, in recognition of your bravery and cleverness, I am giving you a token of my esteem. What's gotten into him? I think it has to do with what he's just gotten out of. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
burgundy. You want this? You'll never cut the mustard, mean winner. Food <laughs> fight. Your history, private pizza. Pow. And your lunch. Call that curtain. Fire. What's going on? Joy Slim is food again, Mom. Food fighters, figures in combat card and eat sold separately. Toys do not walk and talk. A new racing team is shifting into gear. Mask. Tracker Seamus! Don't race off on my account, Mayhem! Mask, Buzzard and Delight. Each sold separately with two figures. Buzzard, convert! Wrong! You flag cover. I'm heading upstairs, Nevada. Roger, Matt. Okay, Mayhem. This round's for you. Mask, where illusion is the ultimate weapon. Mask, Goliath, and Buzzard each sold separately. New from Kenner. Alright. Now we're keeping on going. We're keeping on trucking. Uh, this week we're doing the second episode of Robocop. Uh, Robocop was part of the Marvel Action Universe, or in some markets, the Marvel Action Hour. Um, Hi, I'm Saban, yet again, and Shuki Levy. We're there again to do the music at the beginning. Uh, I am had to make all that money so he could go spend it and buy the Power Rangers and become a billionaire. Uh, it only ran 12 episodes. A lot of shows only went those 12 episodes. That was one, one season in the 80s was 12 episodes, 12 weeks. Uh, then they would repeat the hell out of it. Um, it went from October 1st to December 17th, 1988. Uh, it was, yet again, it's another show that was in syndication, so this didn't have a set channel. I believe we had it locally on Fox. Uh, I want I believe it was Fox that we had it on. Um, they did, the funny part is, like G.I. Joe, uh, there were no bullets, there were lasers. Um, so all the bullets went away in RoboCop and became laser beams. So, alright, I want you guys... Enjoy this week's episode of RoboCop, and we will be back, and have fun. Detroit, the near future. Officer Alex J. Murphy and his partner, Ann Lewis, fight to rid the decaying city of the criminal element which infests it. After being mortally wounded in the line of duty, Officer Murphy is outfitted by OCP with bulletproof titanium robotic parts and with computer-enhanced motor and sensory capabilities. He has become the ultimate super cop. Robocop. See? I told you, Samson. This place is a regular gold mine. Yeah. Pick a car. Any car. <laughs> I don't believe it. It's Robocop. Thank you, Murphy. You're welcome, Lewis. Call me Anne tonight, okay? Yes, Lewis. Anne. Boy, we're lucky that walking tin can didn't see us. Come on, Samson. We gotta work fast. Get back in the house. My word! B -b 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 bon appétit, Monsieur Robocop. Thank you. I'm glad you accepted my invitation to dinner, Murphy. It's it's nice to hang loose once in a while. I I feel strange here. You might look different than anyone else, but underneath all that metal, you're still a human being. Am I? Help! Someone stole my car. Excuse me. I have to run. But Murphy. Hey, this car gets really bad gas But I like it. Too bad, because we're going to sell it as fast as we can. Huh? Pull over to the side of the road. Last. Looks like Robocop didn't stay for dessert. Proceeding west on Lee Boulevard, heading toward Kirby Avenue. Step on it, Samson. we got to lose this joker. This ought to slow down that overgrown trash compactor. Now that Bucket Brains is busy, let's get out of here. No problem. Who 
great balls of fire. This cop's not giving up. We gotta shake this guy. to remain silent. But gee, officer, I didn't realize I was going that fast. Oh, shut up, Jake. But, Lewis, he was just doing his job. Nobody walks out on Ann Lewis. Not even Robocop. Book him. Good work, Robo. Thank you, Sergeant. <clears throat> Thanks for ruining our date, Murphy. You could have at least let me come along with you. Sorry, there was no time to waste. Waste? Excuse me, I must recharge my power supply. Oh, the nerve of that man! Looks like you need another date, Lewis. I'm available. You might be, but I'm not. And he said, that wasn't my wife, that was a hedgehog. <laughs> and now, a word from Omni Consumer Products. Food, shelter, transportation, and travel. These are just a few of the things that OCP has to offer the fine citizens of old Detroit. As the head of Omni Consumer Products, I've dedicated my life to serving the needs of the people. Remember, at OCP, you, the consumer, are number one. Liar! OCP is just a lousy scam. And the old man is the biggest crook of them all. Yeah! That's right. Hey, Scrambler, what's your beef? If it wasn't for the old man, I wouldn't be inside this rotten place. I wasn't the only OCP employee who skimmed a little profit off the top. Yeah, but you were the only one who got caught. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's not funny. The Scrambler's a genius. Someday I'll find a way to destroy OCP and the old man. Then I'll have the last laugh. Looks like old Robocop's catching 40 winks. I wonder what he's dreaming. His dreams are of no concern to me, Roosevelt. What matters is that Robocop's reflexes are operating smoothly and his circuitry is functioning to the max. In a word, he's perfect. Phew! That's one thing we don't want falling into the wrong hands. Gee, Scrambler, what book are you looking for? Quiet, you fool. I'm not looking for any book. I'm trying to break into OCP's main computer. Found it! <laughs> now, what should I play with first? Uh, how about a game of video basketball? <laughs> That's it! Project Robocop! And this must be the password that'll get me into the file. Perfect! <sighs> well, it's time for me to call it a night, Roosevelt. Make sure that Robocop continues his recharging cycle. No sweat, Doc. I'll keep an eye on the old cybernetic snoozer. Oh, no. I accidentally left the password to Robocop's file on the screen. Well, I must be tired. Well, I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Dr. Tyler. This is going to be one of the easiest shifts I've ever had. Oh. What in blazes is going on? You having a bad dream? Unbelievable! Robocop's walking in his sleep! I must destroy the power! Forgot to pay the electric bill, Scrambler? You insignificant insect. This is just part of my plan. Need I say more? Hey! 
Wait for me! Thanks, Robocop. This is just what the Scrambler ordered. Your plan worked like a charm, pal. We're gonna be free! What do you mean, we? <laughs> Gee, you must have gotten up on the wrong side of bed today. He's awake! It's about time. Where have you been all night? Here. Sorry, Robo, but you took a little walk in your sleep. You must have gone somewhere. I do not understand. Neither do I. Last night, there was a jailbreak at the Metro South Prison, and according to eyewitness reports, a seven-foot giant smashed through the prison walls. Just a minute, Sarge. There's only one seven-foot giant I know, and he would never do anything like that. Look, kid, we're not gonna score any touchdowns just jawboning about it. I want some answers, and I want them now! Look at this damage. Whoever did this must be incredibly strong. Like me. I hate to say this, Murphy, but I wonder if there is a connection between your disappearing act and the jailbreak last night. But, Lewis, I... Oh. Oh. Murphy, what's wrong? I... I do not know! Thanks, Robocop. This is just what the Scrambler ordered. Ah! 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 Perfect. Perfect! My plan is working perfectly! I've waited a long time for this moment. Ooh, the Scrambler. Is this some kind of joke? Oh, this is no laughing matter, old man. Your time has come. As usual, your threats are meaningless. I'll have you back in jail as soon as the police can find you. You'd better hurry, then. By the end of the day, Omni Consumer Products will be out of business for good, and you all may reduce to a distant memory. <laughs> the reprogramming of Robocop's system is finally complete. OCP Supercop is now under my control, and no one can stop me. Hey, Murphy, what's going on? Where do you think you're going? Huh. This is the second time that man's run off without me. Put a lid on it! I don't want to hear one more word from you creeps. It makes Frederick nervous. Yeah! <laughs> huh? Oh, oh, no. Robocop isn't a super cop anymore. He's a super crop. He did what? Where's Tyler? What seems to be the problem, Sergeant? The problem is your cybernetic pal just robbed a bank. Say what? That's impossible. Tell that to the witnesses who saw him haul off 20 grand in broad daylight. I... I don't understand. Robbing a bank would violate his prime directive. Well, you geniuses had better figure out what's wrong with that walk-in can opener before he really hurts someone. You've served me well, my friend. And this is only the beginning. Together, we'll crush OCP. <laughs> What's going on? It's Robocop! He's crashing the research lab! Stop him! Not me. I'm getting out of here before this whole place blows up. Attention all units. Be on the lookout for Robocop. He is armed and dangerous. That metallic maniac is destroying OCP facilities all over town. He's got to be stopped. 
I'm trying, Lieutenant, but he's not responding to my commands. If I could just talk with Murphy, I know I could reason with him. You keep out of this, officer. But I was only trying to... You've been trying to undermine my authority with Robocop from day one. By constantly interfering with his program behavior, you've confused his basic operating commands. That's a load of red cabbage, and you know it. Listen, that crazed cyborg is too dangerous to roam the streets. If you ladies can't get it together to stop him, I will. Do not hesitate, my robotic friend. Destroy. Destroy. Destroy! you'd cross the line someday, you rustling bucket of bolts. Make one more move and you'll wind up in the junkyard. Don't let them take you, you fool. Escape! Hey, what's he doing? Dark! He's getting away! Stop him! He's firing men! It's no use, sir. What? I'll get that renegade robot if it's the last thing I do. By now, you've heard what I did to your precious facilities. As you see, Robocop is under my complete control. And now he's coming after you. I hope your affairs are in order. <laughs> Goodbye. You warned me that Robocop might turn against OCP someday, Dr. McNamara. I'm afraid there's only one thing left to do. Dr. Tyler, pull the plug on Robocop. What? But, but, sir, I was just about to... Yes, sir. I understand. What's wrong, Doc? That was the old man. He ordered me to pull the plug. Oh, man. But that would destroy Murphy. You can't do it, Doctor. It'd be like murder. Do you think I want to? Hey, nobody wants to do this, but we've got to. Robocop's out of control and dangerous. <sighs> I've put the last three years of my life into this project, Sergeant. But I suppose you're right. We have no choice. No! <sighs> there. It's done. What in the... Those fools thought they get out with the scrambler. What's going on? I, I, I can't shut down the system. Someone's overridden my commands. Look! It's Robo One, and he's heading towards OCP headquarters. Oh no! Somebody's gotta stop him! Let nothing stop you! Vengeance must be mine! <laughs> He's headed your way, Hitchcock. Don't worry, we're ready for him. There he is, sir. Fire! We need aerial support. Fast! Lieutenant, where's Robocop? Your bucket-headed boyfriend's playing King Kong! Oh, no! I 
just hope I'm not too late. Stop! Lewis! That's an order! What in heaven's name is going on out there? Keep away from the window, sir. It might be dangerous. But we're 80 stories high. No one could possibly... Robocop! Hold it right there, Tin Man! I have come for you, old man. No, stay back. Murphy, wait! You don't know what you're doing. This isn't right. You know it isn't. Don't stop, you metallic moron! Execute your command! You're a good cop, Murphy. Think of your prime directives. Serve the public trust, uphold the law, protect the innocent! Don't listen to her! Shoot! Murphy, please! <laughs> Are you all right? Yes. Thanks to you. Hey, what are partners for? Please excuse me. Wait! Where are you going? To take care of unfinished business. Murphy, wait! Grant, I lost control of Robocop. Better get out of here before he comes looking for me. You are too late. Robocop! You are under arrest. That's what you think. <laughs> halt! Or there will be trouble. Ha! You'll never catch me, you computerized cretin. Guess again, creep. What the... You have the right to remain silent. If you cannot afford an attorney, the court will appoint one. Oh. Yes, that's right, sir. The scrambler's behind bars, and I've changed Robocop's password so this can never happen again. I trust you'll see that it doesn't, Dr. Tyler. Yes, sir. How are you feeling, Murphy? Now I realize that Dr. Tyler was right. I am nothing but a machine. It's about time you figured that out. Are you crazy? Sure, the scrambler messed with your brain, but you proved that your humanity is still stronger than any computer program. I... I had not thought of it that way. Hey, sounds like this calls for a celebration. Right. I'll take you to dinner again. Uh, no thank you. What? This time, let's get takeout. have been generated to stop them. A soccer trophy changes into an evil techno tank, forcing the computer warriors down. Hiding in a Pepsi can, the computer warriors fight back and deliver a direct hit. But the viruses keep coming, so the computer warriors convert a clock into a digital laser blaster and wipe out the virus air attack. Yeah! Computer warriors, expect the unexpected. Each sold separately. Computer and pencil sharpener available for 1990, only from Mattel. Power Lords! Instant Rescue Warriors! I am Lord Power, leader of the Lords! Griptog and Rhaegoth are attacking! We must help Psyduck defend Balkan Rock! Power Lord! Griptog has four fists! Psyduck is finished! It's Lord Power! He's at Griptog's head! But Arcus has Psyduck! <laughs> Power Lords! Adam Power, Sidot, Grip, Tog, and Arcus are each sold separately from the Power Lords collection, new from Ravel. In planet long ago, a genetic experiment fails. A civilization dies. 
the result, the Sectors, a strange combination of man and insect. Dargon, leader of the forces of good and Dragonflyer, battle evil Spydrax and Spiderflyer. You control every move of Dargon and Spydrax and their Insectoids. This is Heroic Pinsor, another defender of good and his attack crawler. Help him prevent the evil Skulk and his treacherous Insectoid from discovering the secrets of the ancients. Secrets buried long ago when the last survivors hid them deep within the planet. Now you control the Sector's every move. And the ultimate battle for survival is in your hands. Collect the fierce armies of Dargon and Spydrax with their attack Insectoids and fierce legions of warriors. Sectors by Coleco. I know, I gotta do the spiel, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, everybody, like, subscribe. Uh, if you wanna see anything, wanna hear it, tell me to, to know, don't play that cartoon again. I want you to find this cartoon. Mind you, I will find every cartoon and air whatever cartoons I possibly can, but the algorithms and stuff like that and all the fun stuff is, is that there's a lot of stuff I just can't air. Uh, I will air whatever I can uh, I will pick apart every video I can find, and I will put together a three, uh, roughly three-hour block of cartoons, just like the uh, '80s. We used to get up in the morning, eight o'clock, and at eleven. Uh, depending on what market you were in, yet again, because some sometimes it went from eight to noon. Um, so, but actually, some markets went from six o'clock in the morning till noon. Um, also, if you guys want me to start putting actual Saturday mornings together, I will do a, an entire Saturday morning episode. So we will start early in the morning, and we'll put some old school cartoons at the beginning, run some 80s cartoons, and I'll put like a Kung Fu movie or something on at the end. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be a long block, like five hours. I don't know if you guys want to watch five hours, because this stuff's almost three. So, if I also, yeah, if my show's too long, tell me. My, you think my show's too short? Tell me. So, I just want to give everybody the old school Saturday morning feel. Um, you know, just every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern, I drop a new episode of Saturday Morning Serials. Um, you know, just, I'm here to have fun. I don't care. I don't. Every, everybody's on YouTube to make money. I'm just here to have fun. So, just have fun. Enjoy cartoons. Um, I found a great quote. It says, even though you're growing up, you should never stop having fun. And that's uh, Nina Dobru. Um, but I, I, here's what I like to say is, is uh, take time, slow down, remember simpler times, and watch cartoons. Uh, you know, this isn't about you know anything about anything just have fun enjoy yourself you're never too old to watch cartoons shoot just have it enjoy it have fun kick back relax life's too freaking hard so i am paul as always your humble host of saturday morning serials and i wish you guys to have a great weekend great day whatever day you're watching this have fun and I will see you next Saturday for more Saturday morning cereals. Later.